Let's look at how elements are made. Let's play God for a while. There's just one rule in the game that you will need to follow. All elements needs to be neutral at the end of it. That is, they can neither be positive nor can they be negative. By now, you would know that protons are positively charged and electrons are negatively charged. Now, I try taking a proton and I will hook it up with one electron. And what do I get? I dish out the first element, which is hydrogen. Next, I'll try taking two protons and putting them together, but they hate each other. So does this take you back to a basic physics concept? That is, like charges repel. So what do I have to do? I'll bring a little friend known as neutron. The element is now positively charged. But remember, I told you that the element needs to be neutral. So put in two electrons and they bind together by strong molecular forces. And what do I get? I get a helium balloon. So if I need to make elements, we need to add more and more protons, more and more neutrons and more and more electrons. So if I have three protons, I'll have my next element, which is lithium, four protons, beryllium, five boron, six carbon, seven nitrogen, eight oxygen, and so on and so on and so on. So now you know what needs to be done to get that coveted PhD, right? Find a new element with 119 protons and 119 electrons and you can be on your way. But mind you, it's not that easy. It turns out in nature that every element from one proton, which is hydrogen, to 92 protons, which is uranium, are naturally occurring. Although few elements in this are very, very scarce. The nuclei becomes large and unstable beyond uranium. They fall apart so quickly that we don't see them in nature. We physicists can make nuclei with more than 92 protons, but they do not survive long and need to be artificially created in the lab. So we know now that newer elements are formed by increasing the number of protons and electrons. Hey, but what about neutrons? We can't leave out our friend, the neutron, can we? So what happens if you start playing around with the number of neutrons? You will create avatars of elements. So do you see avatars of all elements in nature? Not really, because they're so unstable that they cannot hang around for a long time. One of the useful and the most famous avatars of elements are those of carbon, also known as carbon-12. It is the stablest form of carbon. This is a very, very important element because 25% of all living things are made out of carbon. Why carbon-12? Because it's got six protons and six neutrons. So six plus six is going to be equivalent to 12. Am I not intelligent? So. The avatars of carbon-12 are carbon-13 and carbon-14. One carbon atom out of every hundred has one extra neutron and that is called the carbon-13. This is just like the basic carbon-12 other than the fact that, yeah, you guessed that right, it is a little heavier. Then there is one more rarer avatar of carbon formed when cosmic rays strike nitrogen high up in the atmosphere. Why nitrogen? Because nitrogen has got seven protons and seven neutrons and the cosmic rays converts one of the protons into a neutron. So now it becomes six protons and eight neutrons, which is going to give you carbon-14. Carbon-14 is an unstable element and it decays back into nitrogen over time. Now I'm going to give you the technical name of all these avatars. It's known as isotopes. So what are isotopes or what is the technical definition of isotopes? These are elements having the same number of protons, but having different number of neutrons.